Hey guys, and welcome to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagaris, and today I have a ranked Scoia'tael deck for you guys, and that is this Thinning Movement deck. So the gist of this deck is that we can spread our units out across the rows. We have our Dwarven Agitators, which will spawn a base copy of a random different bronze dwarf from your deck. The only other dwarf we have is Dwarven Mercs, so it spawns a copy of Dwarven Mercs. These you can use to move your opponent, or you can move your allies, and if you move your allies, you boost them by three. Once we've spread units out across the row, we have Elven Mercenaries, which will draw the Mahakam Ales from our deck, so that we can use these to then draw these and get a 13-point play. We also have one Sage, which will allow us to replay one Mahakam Ale as well, so we have the option of up to four Mahakam Ales. We have Barkley Ales, he's going to play a random uh, Bronze or Silver Dwarf from our deck, we can use him to draw Agitators or Mercenaries. And once he's dead, we can actually resurrect him with Hattori, resurrects a Bronze or Silver Scoia'tael unit with power less than or equal to this unit. If we end up in a situation where we win and our opponent is two cards down, or sorry, we lose and our opponent is two cards down, we also have Elven War Dancers, which we can actually mulligan into round two, putting them on the board and uh, disabling our opponent from dry passing, so this gives us an advantage. If you draw poorly, you know, we have Saskia here, and Saskia's going to basically uh, allow us to mulligan so that we can find the cards that we need. We mulligan two cards from our deck and then replace them with uh, bronze cards, which we can target draw. We have Eskel for removal, so this is just to remove problematic units. Uh, we have Muzzle, again for removal, removing problematic units. We have Artifact Compression for removal. Uh, and we have Marching Orders, which will allow us to target draw our Elven Mercs. We've got Yevin uh, in order to help with card advantage, and we've got Morin, who can be really strong uh, once you've won a round, because you can kind of dictate how to play her. And you can actually also play her with Bruverhoog, and if you play her with Bruverhoog, that puts some points on the board so that your opponent can't just pass if you play Morin. Bruver can also target draw uh, Hattori and Barkley, so we can guarantee that we get that combo off. Um, and we have a Glace. She'll allow you to take a special card from your opponent's graveyard. And, you know, some people ask about this card, but actually, generally, I think you do get a target for her. Uh, in the current meta, you know, people are playing a lot of spells, so a Glace, you usually should get a decent target out of her. And if you find that this is, like, a card that's not working for you, you could always run, you know, Igni or something along those lines, and that would give you kind of value as well, or just, you know, Gold Weather works. There's lots of different options, really, if you don't want to run a Glace. But this is the deck. If you like it, hit that thumbs up button. And without further ado, I'll jump into a ranked game and show this deck in action. Why should I help you? Mahakam wasn't built in a day. Okay, so we're against Unseen Eldo, which means Muzzle and Artifact Compression are going to be really strong. We do have Muzzle, but we don't have Artifact Compression. In terms of the Mulligan, you can choose the Mulligan Elven War Dancers in round one, but I typically hold them for round two or three. You want a Mulligan Ales because you'll be able to draw them with Elven Mercs, and you typically want to Mulligan Dwarven Mercenaries because you're going to be pulling them with Agitators, so you, you want them in your deck, basically, rather than in your hand. And uh, I will play... I'm actually tempted to mulligan Morin so that if this is an Unseen Eldo with Necker Spam, that we have a counter for that. So if we mulligan Mor Morin, we can always target draw her with uh, with Barkley, which puts some points on the board and stops our opponent from dry passing. It really depends on what happens in, in this matchup in terms of whether we win the coin flip or not. Uh, I guess we'll just mulligan the Merc. Eskel's not too bad. We can use that to kill Neckers as well. Might turn. So yeah, this is the situation where it would have been nice to open open with that, but unfortunately not. Instead, what we can open with is a Dwarven Agitator into a Mercenary um, and just get some points on the board. And we'll wait and see what kind of Unseen Elder deck it is that we are up against. If you place a Necker here, you know that it's Necker Spam. Okay, so it's not Necker Spam, which is quite interesting. We can actually play Morin here um, and, and uh, that will allow us sub removal. I think we, we still want to hold our muzzle, really, so that we can, can damage units. But the problem is... Uh, He's likely to buff his Neckers so much that this isn't an issue, so it's kind of a risky play. Morin's not bad here. Alternatively, we can start thinning our deck and filling the board, in which case we would play Dwarven Agitator in order to get more units on to the board. I mean, he's likely to play an Ekamara here regardless, so I think for now we play this. Uh, and then we'll play this and pull this here. And there we go. So now we have units on both rows, which means that if we play Elven Mercenary, we will be able to get full value from our Mahakam Ales. So now we just wait for him to play. Anytime today. Hey 
Any time today. So that isn't a very surprising play. You know, it's it's a fairly a fairly standard kind of line of play with this deck. Uh, I think what we'll do for now is we'll play the storm the, is coming. This Let's and then the, the ale. The problem is because he has carryover. What this means is that we're in a bit of a tricky position in terms of this round. We want to win this round, but we're in a bit of an awkward spot. Other than that, there's Kran. Uh, I guess we could marching orders. We are still ahead. I'm just trying to wonder what else he's likely to play here. Akamaras are quite common. So that's something to be kind of aware of. I think we can just march your orders, get another Mac, thin another ale. And we're, we're comfortably ahead of him. The problem is, because of stuff like Giant Toad and Katakan, it can be a bit awkward. You know, he's got a lot of carryover as well. And this is what I mean about the harpies. He's going to be eating beasts and, and pu pulling harpies. We could pull Barkley. If we pull Barkley, that thins him from the deck. Uh, which isn't too bad. We can actually also afford to play Yavin in this situation because we can kill it with Eskel. Um, and that's not a terrible play. It gives us kind of more options, which is nice. We can muzzle this, but if we muzzle this, then it means that we can't muzzle his Neckers. But on the flip side, it takes six carryover away from him. So potentially that's a good option. Uh, and ultimately, I think I'm going to take it. If I get to a situation where I can play Yavin without him going ahead, I'm likely to take it because that is likely to draw us artifact compression. We need the special card. Alternatively, we might get Mahaka Mail. As it is, he's got Commander's Horn. We are still ahead, however, so, you know, it's kind of interesting. What we'll do, we'll play Bruver. Uh, and we'll target draw Barkley because we want to thin him from our deck so that when we play Hattori, we have a target. Uh, we'll play this on the middle row. And basically, we're just buffing small units so that you know, every, all of the power is kind of evenly spread out, that there's not a good Scorch. Although, you know, if he has Scorch, there's a 15. He's got an Igni for 10 or 11. But, you know, that's just kind of how it goes. If you're playing Ales, it's a little bit random. But Yavin can draw us Mahakam Ale. Uh, artifact Compression. I think that's it. So it's 50-50. This guy is really slow to play. We're just kind of sitting here waiting for him to play cards. So he's going to eat beasts. It's not really surprising. He eats beasts and they get thin from his deck. And the life is good. We maybe should have played Morin a bit earlier because if he catches us up here, we don't have a very good line of play. But I think we're all right to play Morin here. And we'll trick him into thinking it's to reveal by playing it in between like that. So that he might uh, he might think it's to reveal. He doesn't know is the thing. And by putting it in between units like that, we're buffing them. It's a shame Esco can't target golds. Look at that big 30 point gold. Or if we'd run Igni instead of a Glace, maybe life would have been better. That was a dumb play. They'll not leave here alive. So we're 12 points up. I don't really want to play Esco unless I play Yavin. But if I play Yavin, we're on even. But then I can play Esco and still win the round. So I think we play Yavin here. No such thing. And there's artifact compression. Like Sasuke is nice, but in this matchup we want artifact compression because we want to be able to stop his Neckers. And we have Eskel into the Yavin. We can use Eskel to kill it. So, you know, we have a 19-point play as well. So I think this is a safe situation to play our spy. And there's the pass. I mean, if we pass on even, the question is, do we think we can win a round? Do we think we can win a round with these cards? I think we probably can, actually. The issue is he's got a lot of cards that boost. That's kind of how that deck works. So then we might not see Eskel value. But on the flip side, we have the same amount of carryover as him. We have a war dance so we can mulligan. I think we're probably okay to take the tie here. And he does have to go first, I believe. I think that's how it works. Because we passed second. So so long as we don't draw Elven war dancer here, we're kind of okay. Um, and so now if we mulligan this one, we blacklist it you, into a glace, uh, which actually gives us Commander's Horn, which is really good. And if he does start to play, uh, if he does start to play Neckers, we'll just artifact compression one and hope that he doesn't have more than one in his deck. So 
sure, yeah, I think I think this is a good position for us. Come on, show me what you got. The thing is, he hasn't really eaten that many times. He's done Unseen Elders 3, Kran 4, Ekamara's 5, 6. He's done about 6 eats, which would be enough. I guess if your Necros are on 3, they should be on 9 now. I mean, I've played Muzzle already, so he doesn't really have to worry about that. I mean, the alternative is you hold the Artifact Compression and let him eat a bunch of stuff, and then once he's done got like a big target, then you Artifact Compression that. That is your alternative strategy. We can also escal this, which isn't too bad. Have so strength, let's play this and thin a Mahakam Ale. And now we'll start stacking a row. Um, and we'll start stacking a row so that we can get decent value out of our Iglaise into Commander's Horn. And this is why I like Iglaise, because there are situations where she's, you know, really huge value. And this is one of them. What's he gonna play? Yeah, so that's what I mean by uh, uh, artifact compression targets. Ultimately, though, we kind of have a choice. Like, he hasn't played an Ekamara. He didn't eat anything good either. What did he eat? An Ekamara. Which doesn't help him because, you know, he wants carryover for later rounds and we're kind of denying that. For now, let's do this. And again, keep stacking that row. The other thing we kind of want to do is... We kind of want to probably escort the six, because I don't think he's going to play anything bigger to escort. But before we do that, we're just going to get rid of this uh, and basically just deny him Neckers. It means that he has to have two Neckers in hand if he wants to be able to chain them. So by removing I that, you put him in a really awkward position. On principle. So the Drowner's actually given us a be better escort target, to be honest, and lined up our Glace. So I'm going to just, do we take that? Is he likely to boost it or eat it? I don't think so, but... Sure, no problem. You know, I don't want to take the risk. Like, a 14-point play there is pretty decent. We are nine points up on even cards. But with two very big power plays in hand. You know, we have the... Oh, is he going to take... If he takes Barkley, that, that's bad. But the thing is, if he takes Barkley, it denies him a good res. Now is the thing. Yeah, that's not a bad play. All right, let's do this. Don't leave me here. Uh, so then we take Barkley, which should hopefully get an Agitator. We'll put him in the background as well. Uh, so we can play this. We'll pull this to the middle row. Everyone gets buffed. Everyone is happy. We are 10 points up with a 29 point play in hand. And even with his ghoul play here, he's going to get a consume, but he has no Neckers to buff. He doesn't really have anything good in his graveyard to eat either. The biggest target is a 7, the one that we killed. So even with that play, you know, it's, it's not a great life for him. And uh, we'll play this. Uh, Commander's Horn. And to the back row. And we could have taken Monster's Nest and like faffed around with that. But, you know, either way we were going to win the round. And uh, win the game. So there you go. That is the Squirtel deck. And actually, you know, Squirtel, they have a bit of a bad rep at the moment. But I would say that this deck is pretty decent. And, you know, you definitely can win with it. I think it's quite a fun deck to play as well. We send a GG. And then we'll jump into another game. Me! Or me. <laughs> Nothing like a dwarf to get you to a tight spot. Okay, so next up we have King Bran, which could be veterans. It could be standard discard. There's a lot of things it kind of could be. Uh, in this matchup, muzzle is nice. You could take away res targets. Uh, you know, Morin is quite good. If you can time her with Sigurd Drifa or pause them into a position where they have to play into it, that's not good. Uh, we'll get rid of an ale first and foremost, and then a dwarven merc, and then an ale. And we got Artifact Compression. Artifact Compression's okay. Um, it's not ideal, but it's not completely terrible, you know? And our opponent has to go first. It really depends what kind of deck he's running. You know, there are situations where Artifact Compression's great, but if it's discard, you know, the only real targets you have for it are things like Morkvarg and All Geared, and uh, they're not the best targets, shall we say. <laughs> of course, friend. Okay, so Orgyard, Wolfsbane, and Morkvark, which means it's not Ceres, so, you know, we don't have to worry too much about that. We can take his Morkvark, uh, but I'm wondering how much use is his Morkvark if he's not running Ceres, as, you know, it, it's a little bit of carryover, but it's not the greatest card ever, 
realistically. We could also thin Barkley Elves and just play Bruver Hoog. Um, it's not a bad option either. Bruver Hoog would then pull a Dwarven Merc because we have all of our agitators in hand. I think we'll do that for now. Nothing like a dwarf to get you into the tight spot. And typically you want to avoid putting things on the back row because some cards like this are row locked. So because you're trying to spread out your units for your uh, Elven Mercs, putting too many units on one row is a bit risky. Although actually in this situation, you know, we don't actually have any Elven Mercs or a way of drawing them because we haven't drawn Marching Orders. We would draw Marching Orders if we played uh, Yavin though. The other option is we can muzzle the Monkvog and then put it on our side and that gives us a bit more carryover. So then it kind of counters his all geared. And also then if we mulligan an Elven War Dancer, you know, we can kind of counter his carryover a little bit. And that's not a too bad of a plan either. This is going to trigger in two turns. So not this turn, but the next turn. So we have to bear in mind that whatever we play, he's going to get an extra 12 points. So we're probably currently about even on points. Oh, and he's opted to pass. I'm taking the pass here. Even card pass is, you know, perfectly fine. We've got Yavin in hand. We don't need to win the next round, and we have good options for final round plays. So I'm quite comfortable with this. Sage is not bad, except we don't have any ales. Like, we haven't got any ales in our graveyard. We got a mulligan the ale. Can I have an Elven Mercenary, please? Or Saskia. Saskia would be good too. Marching Orders gives us an Elven Merc, so at least we can thin one from our deck. So at the moment, S uh, Yavin will give us a choice of an ale or a unit. And ultimately, the unit is, is not bad. Except it might be Elven War Dancer or Mahakam Ale, which is not great. It's not, a, not an ideal situation. I do think we can push him this round, though. We're on even cards and we have Yavin, so we can get card advantage. And we have a Hattori for a big finisher. Uh, are you going to play? Come on, Agitator, you can do it. Elven blarney. There he goes. Ah, they used to tire my tongue about that. So we'll see. He's got Wolfsbane, but, you know, the Wolfsbane is not an issue for us at all. Because if it triggers, like, he gets some points. You know, so so what? I guess is the, the point. Like, it doesn't really matter. Lack of Elven Mercenaries, that's, that's that's the hardest part. Like, no Saskia and no Elven Merc. Because normally if you don't get them, you know, you can Saskia and you can find the cards that you need. But, uh, life's been a little... Is this Axeman? It's fucking Axeman. Oh, you're getting muzzled, baby. We actually have the perfect answers for this. We have muzzle and we have artifact compression. Oh, this poor guy. He doesn't see it coming. He does not see it coming. And actually, we have Eskel as well, so life is pretty good for us. <laughs> for I feel so- I feel so bad. Okay, I don't feel that bad. I feel a little bit bad. And the thing is, if he puts them on a row, we could just move units off the row. He's, he's kind of given up on that regard. Like, he's like, nah, we're going to move this to the back row. I don't actually have ways of dealing damage, realistically. Elven Blarney. Uh, do we want to buff him? No got any hooch left. Let's just buff this one. Stack the middle row instead. Because then we can play our marching orders, get our ale, and... This guy, his his strategy is just not going to work here. I'm really surprised he passed the first round so easily. Like, he gave us a round and he gave us control of the length of the round, and that's not something that you want. I guess he thought maybe we'd dry pass and then he could have a long round three. I guess his plan was like, if I have a long round three, then... But he, he, he gave us a round on even. So, like, we're very unlikely to dry pass.
I mean, realistically, that's not gonna happen. Anyway, we can play Marching Orders now. Have strength. Man. And then we'll play Mahakam Ale and get some points, and that will be pretty good. This guy's really slow to play, but I guess, like, we kind of fucked his win condition, right? Here is one of his win conditions. Here is the other one of his win conditions. To be fair, he probably doesn't go against this sort of deck particularly often. If he plays one more, we can Eskel it. Ideally, we don't want to play Eskel early, though. We'd want to wait till we play Yaven, or we want to... Uh... Wait, well, like, the thing is, you have to kind of kill the, you have to kind of kill the Axemen, because otherwise they get a lot of points. So I guess if he has a third one, we could kill it. Okay, so Sage can come out, I must re play some the Ale, get some more points. And then we'll probably use the uh, Dwarven Mercs to spread our units out. Actually, to be honest, he's played all of his Harpooners, so it doesn't really matter what we do in that regard. Spreading our units out is good, though, because it counters stuff like Lacerate and Row Effects. I wonder if he has Gold Weather. I feel like if he had Gold Weather, he would have played it by now. I wonder if he has, like, Silver Weather. Burner Bran is quite common in this sort of deck. Hmm... That is your brilliant move, truly. The thing is, he needs the points. Like he can't really take the fog. If he takes the fog, we can always pass. Like we we, we got far enough ahead of him that we have, you know, a decent number Hell of points. So we'll take this. Uh, we'll buff you. I mean, I'm not really utilizing the axman effect at all. So that's the thing. I bet you, I bet you Yaven gives us a, a War Dancer or an Ale. In which case, I guess we take the War Dancer because we can mulligan it going into the next round. And then that puts three points on the board. Or we could just 2-0 him. It kind of depends on how this round goes. He really has... But I don't understand his deck. He's got Harpooners. I guess he's got Grimist for Fog. He's got Orgiad and Morkvarg and Wolfsbane. This, I guess, I don't understand that that, that inclusion. So that doesn't really synergize with your Axemen very well. Any last words? Okay, so Igni. It's totally fine. Like, he's played Igni and he's not really even gained that much in terms of points. Well, we must stick together. Just keep playing dwarves. And I think we can probably play, we can play Morin next and put her in between those units and see what happens. He doesn't really have even good graveyard targets. He can res Grimmest, which he doesn't want to do this round. I think we play Morin next though, because I think we force him into a position where he has to. But then the question is, does he play around Morin? Because if he plays around Morin, then, you know, that that's a bit awkward. And the alternative is we can hold, uh, the alternative is that we can hold Eskel for the next round on the off chance that he plays Blood Curdling Raw again and, you know, has another 11 if we play Gavin this round. His issue is he can't pass. He just can't afford to pass. So he has to just keep playing cards. Which is exactly what we want him to do. Is he going to play Restored Grimmest? He is. That is your brilliant move, truly. That's a shame. I was hoping for Sig, but you know, I think I think at 4K MMR people play around it realistically. I'm trying to work out how many points we have if he does pass us. A few. We have a few. Yeah, no, he he can't afford to pass us if we play. If we play Gaven, he can't afford to pass. So let's do that. I'll take the Elven Merc, which is actually quite nice here. Like, 
Like, that's a huge number of points. That's more points than Yevon. Well, it's not like, a huge number. It's like 13 points, so it's still more points than Yevon. We probably do want to play it now as well, because it thins our deck, which means we're more likely to draw well going into the next round. And we're not likely to have three units. Although, with Hattori, you can actually set up three units for the ale. So we could play both of these next round, and that would be okay. Pay attention now. I wager this you'll want to see. Modern Freya is patient, but she broke oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Bad move. <laughs> ah, you've my utmost gratitude. He's in such an awkward position. Hmm, not good at all. No, I'm sorry. Oh, poor Fitzen. Poor Fitzen. And his, uh, <laughs> his axeman. So he has to play here, and if he plays, we're then two cards up going into the final round. And the thing is, now Gremis isn't a great res target unless you can play something for him to target. I can do a great deal more for you. How many points does this put us down? Bear in mind we have a 19 point play. We're down 28. So we make a 19 point play, he has to play his last card. Which means that in the final round we can play this and win. Get the word. There you go, I put someone in your graveyard. Uh, actually I didn't because it's doomed. Mm, not good at all. He must have a res, right? It must just be a res. And he's passed. Do I let him have the round? I want to be nice and let him have the round, but I think I just have to win. I'll just move one of his units. <laughs> ah, dear. Poor dude. Poor guy. Like, I just, I just ruined his whole day. I guess he must have also drawn poorly, though, but I still don't understand the inclusion of the Axeman, because he doesn't have that much that synergizes with them. Like, I was expecting a lot more damage to come out of him than really did. Uh, but, you know, that's the deck. That is the uh, the Squirtel deck. I think it's really fun. People don't really expect it, so it's kind of an interesting one to watch people play against. Uh, and the removal, I think, comes in really handy. You know, the Muzzle, the Eskel, the Artifact Compression are pretty good. Plus, you have some great points engines with the Dwarves and with the Ales. Um, but, yeah, if you like this deck, hit that thumbs up button. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, you can always subscribe to the channel. You can catch me live streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv for slash Jaggers. And you can follow me on Twitter, at Jagris. Have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you in the next video.